Hi guys, good afternoon, and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in today's video, I thought, what the hell, I'm gonna bring you guys another video essay. This one is gonna be titled, The Relic, Why It's So Much Better Than You Remember. Uh, I recently have been re-watching The Relic repeatedly on HBO Max lately, and I've come to realize it is truly an awesome creature feature and overall just a good movie for multiple reasons that I think uh, went uh, over people's heads when the film first came out 25 years ago. That's right, this film is 25 years old. It came out in 1997, if you can believe that or not. So 25 years. Anybody feeling old here? Eh, I kind of am, but I'm still relatively young and good looking. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I thought instead of just rambling on and telling you about why I enjoy this movie so much, I thought I would show you uh, via the images I've gathered from the internet. And I think uh, with the visual... Uh, with the visual elements it'll help remind some of you maybe those of you who have seen this movie but it's been a minute or those of you who haven't seen it which by the way if you do want to watch this movie someday you do not want to keep watching to or listening this uh video essay as i will be discussing spoilers character deaths plot details plot reveals all that jazz. Basically, spoilers for The Relic are to follow throughout this video. And this is probably going to be a pretty lengthy video, too. So you have been warned. That being said, let's get right back into it. And let me explain why The Relic is so much better than you remember. Okay, so here is one of the top reasons why I enjoy this movie so much. This character, Vincent D'Agusta, played by great character actor Tom Sizemore, is the perfect example of the kind of lead any creature feature or monster movie should have. Someone who's smart, capable, doesn't accept the logical explanation, but believes in the alternative, which is, nah, there's something more here, at, there's something at work here more than meets the eye. He's superstitious, he knows it's not over when people think it's over he's not distracted by anything else and uh he's just he's sensible and he doesn't let anything or anyone get in his way he's not a jerk about it but he does deal with some jerks throughout this movie and uh he's just the kind of guy you would want handling a case like this especially if the case was the result of a monster being the culprit in a string of vicious murders like there he's led to believe throughout a majority of this film and the other thing that i like about this movie it has uh, some great supporting characters like these two here, played respectively by Helen Hunt, who plays the museum curator or director, and James Whitmore, who plays one of the scientists working there in the museum. These two are great actors who have done a lot over the years, but they're both really enjoyable in this film. And unfortunately, the movie doesn't do much in terms of character development for most of their characters, but it does a good enough job to make you really care about and feel really feel bad for these characters and what happens to them during the movie. And speaking of other great supporting characters, here's one of my favorites uh, who's, a support, who's a strong supporting character, Officer Bailey. And uh, here he is seen escorting the survivors of the museum rampage through the sewers right before he unfortunately is killed by Cathoga. But early in the film, it's established that he and his partner, Officer McNally, have a funny bromance between the two of them as they're talking about and giving each other shit about different coffee preferences and flavors and how they're both searching the sewers when Bailey here shoots a um, ex-con rapist homeless guy and uh, he's praised as a hero and everyone thinks it's over, but Detective August Augusta knows better that the monster is still out there and here's the scene where Bailey is shooting the homeless guy off screen who turns out to be an ex-con rapist while McNally watches in startlement and uh, these two have some great scenes together there's a great scene right when the emergency breaks out in the museum and the Cathoga attacks one of the cops asks the, one of these two guys to stay behind and look after survivors who can't move easily with the rest of the group so they both say I'll stay and then they both look at each other and then despite their bromantic bickering you can tell they care about each other because Bailey asks McNally if he's well armed and well stocked and he's like yeah I'm good and unfortunately both of them do die in this movie which sucks but at the same time it's like well at least neither one of them had to learn about or know that their uh, respective friend and partner uh, ended up dying so that was too bad but they were great and very memorable and speaking of memorable here is Detective Hollingsworth leading the mayor his wife and other survivors out of the museum through the sewer to escape the Cathedral 
Koga, and he is a great character. He's loyal, kind, sensible. He's the loyal sidekick to uh, D- Augusta, Tom Sizemore's character, and he's surprisingly braver than he looks, and he's capable, and he's the kind of uh, perfect co-star you would want for a lead character like Augusta in a movie like this. And speaking of other great characters, here is Matilda, the medical examiner, played by a late actress who I'm really not that familiar with, but apparently this was her final film role right before she died. And unfortunately, she's only in one scene in the movie, but she absolutely kills it because she's hilarious, sarcastic, and witty, even when she's doing an autopsy with Degusta present to hear the bizarre autopsy results. She's cracking jokes and uh, making wisecracks, and she says something that this brain is light even for a man. There she is holding the brain. And uh, she's just hilarious. And unfortunately, she's only in this one scene early on in the film, and we never see her again. But she plays a very funny, very memorable character. And I wish we got more scenes with her because she was awesome in this. And this is just one of the many reasons why this is not only a good creature feature with strong supporting characters. This is a good movie, period, because of strong supporting characters like this one, despite only having having one scene in the film and RIP to the actress uh, who did this because she did a great job. Speaking of great jobs, I can't remember this actor's name, but this guy plays a character named Greg Lee, who's one of the few human villains of the story, who's this undermining little weasel of a scientist who continues to undermine Penelope Ann Miller's character throughout the film. He gets her locked in her uh, science wing below the museum so he can schmooze up to some billionaires during the museum museum grand opening party so they'll fund his research instead of Penelope and characters Penelope and Miller's characters research and then what makes it even more satisfying is watching him die at the claws of Cathoga and what's funny is that Cathoga actually shows its face for the first time while killing Greg and it's satisfying to watch because you don't mind seeing him and this other prick both get killed and beheaded by Cathoga this guy is the head of museum security who turns out to be quite the jerk off and he goes but he busts heads with uh, Detective D'Augusta. He gets an argument with Helen Hunt, his boss, when she ends up firing him. And it's pretty satisfying to watch him die, too, because he was a real prick, and you don't mind seeing him go at the claws of Cathoga. And speaking of Cathoga, there he is in his terrifying, beautiful glory, the beast himself that was played partially by puppeteers and stunt performers and created via CGI and, of course, mostly animatronics. And I believe this was the work of Stan Winston and his team, and they did a hell of a job because the special effects in this movie, in my opinion, for the most part, still hold up, at least the practical effect-driven parts of the story. And the other thing, too, that makes this such a good creature feature and or monster movie is that there are some excellent scary rampage sequences when the monster or creature in question goes on a scary rampage, killing and or eating a bunch of people. And a prime example of that is when the Chicago Police Department breaks through the glass ceiling of the museum, propelled down on ropes, and then Cathoga starts attacking and ripping their heads off. And it's exactly the kind of scene and thing you want to see in a creature feature in a monster movie like this one and I just cannot get over how good and awesome the Cathoga looks you know and I love the fact that we actually don't even see it until like the close toward or t- towards the end of the film another reason why I like this movie so much is that the actor seen in the earlier photo the old man in the wheelchair this is that same actor James Whitmore and he appeared in another beloved creature feature of mine the sci-fi horror movie from 1954 called Them Them is about giant radioactive ants created by nuclear testing in the deserts of New Mexico and Whitmore plays one of the four lead characters in that film who is a New Mexico state police officer who ends up entangled in a matter concerning giant radioactive man-eating killer ants and unfortunately towards the end of that film his character also meets his demise at the mandibles of a giant killer ant right after he saves some boys from being eaten by them and it's too bad seeing him die in both this movie and the relic but he does such a great job in both films and to me it's just cool and exciting to see an actor whose work I really enjoyed in one film return for a similar kind of movie which in this case was The Relic almost 40 plus years later so 
hats off to them as well because them is a great creature feature as well but uh, it was just exciting to me when i first watched this for the first time seeing hey james whitmore is in this and now on to our leading lady penelope ann miller who plays dr green she's one of the two lead characters where tom sizemore is one of the lead characters and she's the second lead or perhaps she's the first depending on how you look at it anyway she does a great job in this movie, and unfortunately, my only issue with her is that I feel like at moments, they don't do her character justice by during, at times, they have her play the hysterical screaming woman at the sight of a dead body or a big scary monster. Granted, that would be anybody's reaction to any film, but I know there's a stereotype in horror movies where the women are always the damsels in distress, and thankfully, more modern horror movies don't always rely on that outdated stereotype or trope anymore, because as as the film goes along, she is proven to be quite smart, clever, badass, intelligent, and doesn't take any shit from anybody, especially when it comes to trying to do her own work and her research. And she's great. You know what? The movie in the, has its moments where it does kind of make her wo look weak, unfortunately, like this scene right here when she's confronted by Kathoga and it suggestively licks her face. But it turns out this is part of an elaborate trap to for her to slip into an elevator right behind her and then she literally gets the drop on Kathoga by dropping away leaving it to be blown to smithereens by multiple chemicals and liquids that have been stored in mason jars in the storage room in the museum which ultimately blows the bastard to hell as she hides in a metal proof uh, fire container type of thing so they do do her character justice as the movie goes along it's just that when we first meet her and her first um, reactions to Kathoga and dead bodies isn't exactly something that I think a lot of women would appreciate because it would make her look weak. But thankfully, by the end of the film, she's a certified badass. And here is the poster of the film as well. And uh, I just really enjoy this movie. I think it is severely underrated and unappreciated, was not appreciated for what it is nowadays because it did not do very well critically or financially. I think it had a successful opening weekend, but it did not make enough money to justify its original budget. And of course, the critics just ripped it apart as well. But I personally enjoyed it and think it deserves a hell of a lot more love than it's gotten over the years. But perhaps maybe there's been a new development of appreciation for well, it. Well, guys, I hope hope you enjoyed my video and uh, my basically my love letter to the relic. <laughs> I hope this has reinvigorated your interest in the film. You know what? Maybe if you watch enough on HBO Max, uh, the folks at Paramount will be like, hey, people actually like this movie after all. Let's give them more. <laughs> I know it is based off a series of novels, but I don't know how many novels there are and if they continue to be written today and if the author is even alive or not. But you know what? It was a good standalone story the way it was. I really enjoyed it. I just personally believe and think that it deserves so much more love and appreciation than it has ever received over the years. And I hope you guys feel the same way. Then again, maybe you don't, and that's okay. So thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining, educational, informative. And let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments section. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. The Relic is now streaming on HBO Max. You can watch it with a subscription to HBO Max, or you can rent it on other streams streaming platforms as well. It may not always necessarily be on HBO Max. It could end up on another streamer some point down the line in the future. And who knows when, you just gotta pay attention. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody. Stay cool and safe out there. And of course, until next time, may the force be with you.